Barrett, you were a sharp shooter. Did you ever kill any civilians? I have. Yes. When? Uh, through various points in, in Iraq. Uh, most notable was, was basically the... Uh, we did end up killing civilians. I'm not sure who actually it was that, that killed which civilians because there's so much gunfire. But uh, uh, at one point, Khalees was, was under attack. And uh, we responded. We responded to that in a personal security detachment to uh, to ride up into Kalis, and uh, there were there were civilians killed during that attack. Um, basically, they were trying to escape. They were driving their car at a high rate of speed to get out of the the area of contact of danger, and they they were basically driving directly towards us. And uh, in a panicked moment, basically we we basically lit the car up with machine gun fire, and. Uh, uh, there were civilian casualties in, in the vehicle and on, on the side of the road people were trying to hide with the vehicle ran into them and uh, That was probably the most the, one of the hardest points uh, the Hardest deaths that I saw The killings definitely definitely encouraged me to write more and express myself uh, When I when I did write I, I realized that I, I felt like I was I was doing some good some amount of good by by just expressing myself and, and at least uh, trying to show some Americans uh, what exactly was going on in Iraq. Jeff, it appears you took part in the attack in November 2004, the most dramatic one. Were any chemical weapons used in Fallujah? From the U.S. military. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, white phosphorus. Uh, Possibly napalm might may or may not have been used. I don't know. I do know that white phosphorus was used, which is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, a chemical weapon. Is he sure of it? Yes, it happened. How can he be certain? Well, well it, it comes across the radio as a general transmission. When it happens like that, you hear it on the radio. Through we have speakers in our trucks, the speakers, and then the transmission goes to the speaker, so it's audible, and. Um, as, as they'd say, um, in five mics, we're going to drop some whiskey peat. Roger, ten, you know, commenced bombing. <laughs> I mean, it was, it just comes across the radio. And, like, when you hear whiskey peat, that's the military slang. Contrary to what was said by the U.S. State Department, white phosphorus was not used in the open field to illuminate enemy troops. For this, tracer was used. A rain of fire shot from U.S. helicopters on the city of Fallujah on the night of the 8th of November. That we will show you in this exceptional documentary, which proves that a chemical agent was used in a massive and indiscriminate way in districts of Fallujah. In the days that followed, U.S. satellite images showed Fallujah burnt out and raised to the ground. The gases from the warhead, the, the white phosphorus, will disperse in a cloud. And when it makes contact with skin, then it, it's absolutely irreversible damage, burning um, flesh to the bone. Um, it doesn't necessarily burn clothes, but it will burn the skin underneath clothes. And this is why protective masks do not help, because it will burn right through the mask, the rubber of the mask. It will, it will manage to get inside your face. If you breathe it, it will blister your throat and your lungs till you suffocate, and then it will, it will burn you from the inside. Um, it basically reacts to skin, oxygen, and water. Uh, the only way to stop the burning is with wet mud, but at that point, it's just impossible to stop. Have you seen the effects of these weapons? Yes. Burned, burned bodies. I mean, and burned children and burned women. It, it, white phosphorus kills indiscriminately. It, it's a cloud that will, within most cases, to 150 meters of, of impact will, will disperse and it will burn every, every human being or animal. Is it true that you waited for the results of elections, confirmation of victory for Bush, before bombing Fallujah? I'm glad you brought this question up. It, it's that was definitely the case. That was it, even in, in the ranks, in the military ranks, we knew what was going on. 
they told us that we were going to wait after the election, the American election, before going into Fallujah. And we had already set up the whole operation, like it was ready to go. And we were waiting for two or three days for this election to be over with. And then when the election was so close between Kerry and Bush, it was almost pissing off a lot of the high command because they wanted to hurry up and get in there and get it going. And they didn't want they didn't want what happened in 2000 with Gore and Bush, the long drawn out process that lasted almost a week to find out who won. When Kerry conceded, though, it was like within a matter of a day, it was going, it was happening, and that was definitely the case. We waited till after the election. We were told by, directly from the Pentagon to wait until after the election before going into Fallujah. And All right, got auto range on it. Roger. Hey, Roger. Hit him. Got him. Good. Second one. Hit the other one.